Hello Internet! In this video I wanted to take a look at .NET's yield operator and some of the interesting things you can do. So this is just going to kind of be uh, some off the top of my head examples about how to use yield and some of the things you can do with it uh, and why that's kind of cool and, and yeah. Uh, so if you're not familiar, there is a yield command in, in .NET and it looks something like that. You'd use it in, in place of a return statement. And the way this can be used is sort of as a way to sort of uh, create infinite lists or other things. Uh, so let's say we want a list of prime integers. Uh, and we want that list to be n number of digits long. So let's create uh, a public static I enumerable. Uh, so everything that we're doing here is based off of this I enumerable class. Uh, and it's sort of a, a generic implementation of something that allows you to iterate over to the next element and get the next element and then the next element and then the next element. In this case, we can use yield as a way to return the next element in our enumerable set. Uh, so we're working with integers here. And we want to call this uh, prime positive primes that they're not primes uh, positive ints and we'll just give it a max value and so the way this is going to work is we are going to give it some max value and then we're just going to start at one I guess uh, so for int i equals one uh, and then i is less than the max value uh, we're not going to we're going to do non-inclusive so it's not going to include the max value and then we'll just iterate like this and now this is just a really basic loop uh, what we what, what you might want to do is say create a new list uh, so this will be a new list of ints like that and then add on to your list so do list.add i like that uh, and then return your list. Uh, it's not going to like this because I'm not including that, but once we include all of this, everything should be good. Uh, you can see some of these errors popping up. I'm using uh, .NET watch run, which is actually going to watch this directory for changes and then rebuild my project and rerun it every time I save. Uh, so if I hit save here, you can see it starts and it will rebuild uh, and print hello world because we don't have any compile errors. Uh, but we're not actually using this, so what, what we want to do is print out those positive integers. So let's do a for, uh, for each var int, or i, I guess, in our positive integers up to, say, 5. So we should get 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, because it's non-inclusive. Uh, and so this, if we do a console.write uh, line, and just write out i should give us those four numbers and that's what we get so we get one two three and four printed out this is sort of one way to to do this but the other way you could do this without having to uh create a new list is to use the yield operator and it actually shrinks this down just a little bit uh, and so we can actually just delete that list and remove that return statement and remove this and then instead of adding things to a list we're just going to yield and return i which is just going to say return the current value of i as the next value of our uh of our set and when we continue we'll continue after the this line uh so if we were to say go from one to four uh, and you can actually just see it just work because i saved um, but if we were to go from one to four, what's going to happen is we're going to come into this for loop. It's going to initialize to one. We're going to hit this yield and return I. Uh, so we're going to return one as the first element of our list. And then we're going to continue there. We're going to say, what's the next element after that? Uh, and so we're going to hit this. We're going to loop through. We're going to hit the next part of our for loop, increment I up to two. Uh, it's still below our max, and then we're going to return that as the next element of our list. So now we have one and two in that in that list. Uh, the handy thing with this is it's happening lazily, uh, which means the list itself doesn't fully exist until you've actually evaluated it. 
Uh, so if you've ever used link, for example, that's another case where things are evaluated lazily. What this means is you could create theoretically infinite lists without actually running out of memory. Because as long as it can be done programmatically, as long as you can generate your list programmatically without having to store everything, uh, you can actually just generate those values on the fly in, instead of doing anything else. Uh, there's some other things you can do with this. Uh, there's also a valid way to do yield break. Uh, and that would, let's say, return zero. That should work. Hold on. Why doesn't that, why doesn't it like that? I'm pretty sure, okay, huh. Oh, okay, sorry, getting confused. Uh, so what this does is breaks out. If you've used a switch statement before or just break in general. Uh, so like if we want to stop this for loop, uh, we would use break. And that will say, get out of this. You can see we get a, a warning here saying this yield is never going to get uh, run. Because what break is going to do is actually cut everything off in that a loop and jump up out of that. Uh, so we would start here, initialize I to one, uh, check if it's below the max and then hit the break and then be like, all right, we want to go down here, whatever this line would be. Uh, that works the same with coroutines. So if you do a yield break, it's going to get out. Uh, so what we can do instead of all of this is we could, for example, create uh, int, uh, int i equals one <clears throat> while true. Uh, this should be fine. Just return yield, yield return i. And now if we tried to do this with a list, uh, it shouldn't ever, it shouldn't ever return. Uh, we're not incrementing i, so let's add a plus plus there. I don't think it's ever gonna, it's gonna exit though. Oh, it did, cool. Uh, so it force exits when we do that. But this will just keep counting forever. This I've effectively created an infinite list of integers uh, until it hits the maximum value of an integer, and then it will stop. But this is just gonna keep going. If we tried to do this in a list though, uh, it, our program would crash because we'd be we just constantly be trying to s put all of this into a list, uh, and we can't do that. Uh, and so this kind of gives us a way to do cool things like that. That's sort of an illustration of the infinite list. But now that we have this infinite list, we could actually yield break, but we only want to break if our i is greater than or equal to our max value. Uh, again, non-inclusive, so this should only print up to four. And then we're just going to break there. Uh, so this should cause that to get killed and restarted. And now we should see one, two, three, and four again. Uh, so that's an, that's sort of the yield break thing. Uh, there's other uses that I've seen with this. Uh, Unity is probably the most notable. Uh, and they use these yield operators as a way to do coroutines. Uh, and what a coroutine is, is something that allows you to do, it's a asynchronous programming uh, feature, I guess, or, or method. And effectively, it does exactly this. It's a function that instead of entering at the beginning of the function every time, enters at the last point it was at in that function. Uh, and so by using yield, you are effectively recreating that. Uh, and so, yeah, I think those are... Those are most of the things that you really might want to use this for. You can use this in other ways too. Uh, so let's say we want a property. <clears throat> and let's just say, uh, let's not create positive ints, but let's say we want like a list of, uh, I don't know, enumerations or just integers or the first four primes. Let's do the first four primes. Uh, so public, static, uh, it doesn't need to be static. We want it to be a public, I enumerable. Uh, again, it has to be an I enumerable. That's sort of what this is all based off of. Uh, and then we'll just do ints again. <clears throat> or let's do strings because uh, just to show that it can work with other other types. And we're going to call this our uh, names, uh, player names. And so this is going to have some sort of get operator. We're going to use this arrow functionality, which means return this. Uh, and then we're just going to yield 
return something. Uh, let's return uh, world of zero. That seems like an important one. And yield return uh, <laughs> losing losing ideas pretty quickly. There we go. Uh, and yield return uh, Unreal Engine, sure. <clears throat> and so this is just sort of our, our way of returning three different things. I may have screwed this operator up, so let's do that instead there. Uh, and so this is this is our implementation of a set of player names, but it's, it's using the yield operator. So instead of creating a list, we're doing it this way. Uh, and again, you, potentials for infinite lists and things, but also just kind of a handy way to create an inline list uh, with a few different fun like features than creating a list that is just static in memory. Uh, so if we want to look at that, that will be for each var uh, n, I guess, in our player names. It's probably not going to like that because we I don't think I can make this static, can I? I've never tried. Oh, I, I, OK, yeah. I guess that makes sense. Why wouldn't you be able to have static properties? Uh, I'm thinking about different things. Uh, anyway, console write line of our player name. And that should give us world of zero, unity 3D, and Unreal Engine at the end of that, right there. And yeah, those those are I think like the three main things you can do with this that are are sort of useful. Uh, there's probably other implementations, and there's definitely cool things you can do because of the way this has, this is all working. Uh, a lot of this works really well with say Link, uh, and so as sort of the final example, I guess we can do positive ints dot select. Uh, we're gonna want to bring that in, uh, bring in link, do i, uh, and we'll just, we'll square each of the values. So instead of one, two, three, and four, we should get one, four, nine, and 16. Uh, if I can find the i key on my keyboard, there we go. <clears throat> and so this is a really quick like link example, but I want to show one extra thing that may not be obvious right here. Uh, and that is I am going to put a print statement here do, uh, for console write line. Uh, and we are going to be uh, getting the next element. And so like I said, this is a lazily evaluated thing. And so what we're going to see is instead of for getting next elements and then for values, we actually are going to see getting next element one, getting next element four, uh, and getting next element nine, and so on. And that's important because it means that once we return here, everything else is functioning. So, so if if we decouple all of this, what's happening here is we have i at one. We return that as part as the next element of our list. That comes all the way back to this for each loop. <clears throat> runs through this select gets doubled or, or gets multiplied by itself uh, returned as I here and then gets written to our console all before the next element gets gets written uh, and that is handy for a few things um, again infinite lists but anything that you kind of want to do like on demand so if you have say a random number generator and you want something that returns a new random number every time you could use yield as a way to sort of return those. Uh, there's other other consequences of doing that, but that that's sort of out of the scope of this. But the, that that's sort of just uh, I guess a few different ways to apply the yield operator, and hopefully you can you can take some of this and maybe figure out ways to use it, or maybe you've used it in the past and have some cool examples that you'd like to share. Uh, if so, drop a drop a link in the comments, or or I don't know, shout it out somewhere else. Uh, we do have a Discord, uh, so if you want to join that and, and talk programming or game development or, or anything along those lines, come and join that. We have a like a mentoring and uh, 
help group. So if you're if you're running into problems and you, you need some help understanding either this or some other video I've done, or maybe you're just working on on something else and you've hit a wall and you need some people to help you get get over that, uh, we can we can help you out there. So I think that that's it for this video. So until next time, see you, internet.